Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, it is I, the one and only, Sonic the Hedgehog here, aka the Blue Blur, aka Blue Justice, and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more Let's Play of Sonic Rush for the Nintendo DS. So, last time, we've essentially did finish up everything for Blaze's story, but not only we did somehow went into Deadline, in some cases Zone 7, and also we somehow claimed the 7th and the final Soul Emerald in the whole entire story, and on top of that, we also did manage to went into Unknown, in some cases the final zone as Blaze, and we did somehow beat the likes of the Egg King, and as a result, we also did manage to rescue Cream the Rabbit. So, overall, everything else checks out there for the most part, right? Well, if you couldn't tell already, it's about the fact that today for this video, is that this is going to be the true finale in terms of Sonic Rush, and that's what appears to be about the fact that once you've collected all 7 Chaos Emeralds as Sonic, and also if you collect all 7 Soul Emeralds as Blaze, and basically if you go back onto gameplay menu screen right here, that we're able to actually access to extra, meaning about the fact that this is going to be the true finale in Sonic Rush. So basically, similar to the forms of how it does it in uh, Sonic Pocket Adventure, Sonic Events 1, Sonic Events 2, as well as Sonic Events 3, it only contains one super duper final boss, so this means about the fact that we can now able to take on not only Dr. Eggman, but also with Eggman Neko at the same time. So because of that though, yeah, I'm very excited about the forms of going into the actual finale portion of Sonic Rush. So as a result, about the fact that no matter what though, we can able to actually take control of Sonic and Blaze together. So before we get into the forms of the true final boss in the game, we've got ourselves the actual cinematic cutscene we can able to watch. So But uh, yeah, I would have liked to be able to read any of the uh, dialogue in this particular scene, but honestly guys, there's nothing else I can really speak about. Apart from the fact that, well obviously that was about the fact that if you couldn't tell, if you think the entire game was about to be over, well as I mentioned this before, it's about the fact that we're about to stumble across into the true final boss in the game, which not only we can able to face up against with Dr. Eggman, but also with Eggman Necker as well. So because of that though, something tells me about the fact that we're about to take down both Eggmans, so it kind of reminds me of a similar vibes almost uh, for the sake of the forms of Sonic Generations for both the Xbox 360 slash PlayStation 3, including PC as well, in addition to the 3DS version as well, because obviously though, we also decided able to take down both Eggmans itself, while the only difference has been is about the fact that we can take on not only modern Eggman, but also classic Eggman, or should I say, Dr. Robotnik, and I know for a fact that you know what he's gonna say. Nobody calls me that anymore. So, either way though, so it looks like about the fact that the space-time continuum is about to get worse and worse, so we're gonna have to able to stop the actual space-time continuum before it's too late, and oh goodness, we got an ambush! And it looks like we have ourselves a very strange creation for the likes of not only for Eggman, but also for Eggman Neko as well, so... And as, as it turns out... Yeah, Blaze has got beaten by the forms of this very peculiar design for uh, the actual um, Eggmobile, or something like that. Again, I apologize for my commentary, because a little bit if you had some form or another. I mean, let's face it though, it's about the fact that it's been about uh, two days ago since I actually have last played this game for sure. And the reason being for this is because, obviously, if you couldn't tell, I'm still playing through Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Switch Remake, and as a result, currently, at the moment, I'm now on to Chapter 2. So, meaning about the fact that I can now able to actually experience the forms of the great 
uh, boggly tree and you generally forms within the HD quality uh, compared to the forms of how it does it on a GameCube. So no matter what though, still I'm basically having a lot of fun with that game still. And in addition to that is about the fact that recently during the forms have been today that uh, the Godfield movie has recently came out just recently on a big screen. Which I'll explain more about that and so what if we get to the actual boss fight itself. So it looks like no matter what though, Sonic did, did somehow showed up. So no matter what though, we can able to actually take them both on, right? Well, actually, as it turns out, is about the fact that we do need to be able to have the power of the Chaos Emeralds, in addition to the Soul Emeralds as well, nor to be able to become Super Forms, or specifically for Sonic's case, whilst compared to Blaze, on the other hand, well, then again, though, we'll explain more about that if we go through several other text boxes here and there. So, either way, and it's also worth noting for, as far as I'm aware, that I'm quite surprised I honestly forgot to mention about during the forms of on Monday or something like that, there was actually a film called Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers Life Action and uh, uh, CGI Hybrid Movie. You know, something very similar to the forms of how it does it for Who Framed Roger Rabbit, except the fact that obviously it focuses on modern culture or something. But basically, the, that particular film, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers on Disney Plus, has recently became two years old recently. So because of that, though, it's why I classified that, despite the fact that I'm probably not going to talk about the forms of Ugly Sonic after all, because I still really despise that particular design choices as far as I'm concerned, but that's just me. But uh, don't get me wrong, I still kind of like the film, but uh, either way though, it does have some uh, interesting positives I can probably think about while looking back on the film after two years since when it first came out on Disney Plus since in 2022. Like for instance, about the fact that I loved several of Easter eggs for the sake of not only for the sake of the forms of certain characters who voiced by uh, Seth Rogen, that uh, he did the voice of uh, not only Bob from the likes of Monsters vs. Aliens, in addition to uh, Mantis from the likes of the forms of Kung Fu Panda film series, and even obscurely out of the mall though, and that's what appears to be Pompa from the live action version of The Lion King, which I was not too surprised there. But um, there's only one thing I can probably say about it, is about the fact that while looking back on that film still, I still love the fact that they've shown us the forms of a brief cameo appearance for the majority of G4 ponies based off of My Little Pony the Movie 2017, in addition to the forms of Rainbow Road Trip as well, because I can definitely tell from the character, des the character designs look a lot similar for that regard. So either way though, that's why I think about that anyway. So it looks like we've able to actually now get its full power, so this means we can now able to turn into the super forms of ourselves. And so, the true final battle begins in Sonic Rush. So, thankfully it's nowhere near as hard or frustrating compared to the forms of how it does it for the Egg King, but it still can be pretty challenging though. Well, usually for the sake of time. So here we go, on to Exception, which is on the Extra Zone. So obviously though, we're about to take control of not only Super Sonic, but also, according to the forms of the Wikipedia, that we're about to be also take control of Burning Blaze, because it was originally going to be Super Blaze, but actually as it turns out, it does have this specific name, which actually as it turns out, it was actually Burning Blaze. So, yeah, we'll explain more about the forms of Burning Blaze until for later, because as you can see, during the forms of the start of the battle, basically though, we're able to take control of Super Sonic from the start, and basically though, we're able to actually immediately onto the forms of this entire familiar territory for the sake of not only for the sake of the forms of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, for the sake of the Doomsday Zone, but it's also with the forms of, I would say, a chaotic uh, space level for the likes of Sonic Pocket Adventure, and on top of that, there's also the ones with the forms of, I would say, 
um, Sonic Events 2 for True fi True Area 53. That uh, basically does about the fact that we need to dodge a lot of those uh, boulders, if you can tell. And also, every once in a while, though, we still need to collect rings, because obviously, though, much like any other Super Sonic boss fights, basically, though, if you run out of rings, you die automatically if your ring count reached to zero. So basically, in order to able to deal with this particular boss fight, by the way, it's divided into uh, two different phases. So... Basically though, since we're able to take control of Supersonic right here, so this means no matter what though, in order to able to deal the damage to, uh, well, Dr. Eggman right here, is that you need to be able to fire back that particular projectile, as you can tell, right back at its uh, weak spot. So, it can be quite finicky though, but I'll explain more that in a moment. By the way, I love the transition right here. In fact, no matter what though, the actual boss name for this particular zone right here was actually called the Egg Salamander. So, because of that though, yeah, you can definitely tell what the forms of what the boss's name was actually called, by the way. So, anyway, now we can able to take control of Burning Blaze right here. And basically though, she can now fight against with Eggman Nega for reals now. So, because of that though, and uh, between both so uh, Supersonic alongside with Burning Blaze, they both can able to actually have the ability to able to perform a boost. However, Blaze, or as far as I'm aware, Burning Blaze does have the unique ability. In order to able to deal the amount of damage to Eggman Nega right here, you have to hold down this particular button in order to able to actually charge up your projectile attack. And basically, if you let go of the button, then obviously, though, you can deal the bit of damage to uh, Eggman Nega. Oh, and by the way, you need to boost a lot on this particular attack right here, because if you get sucked up with the forms of this very, very weird um, black hole thingy right there, Basically, though, you lose a bunch of rings. So because of that, though, I highly suggest you're able to clear away from that particular really, really weird attack. But either way, that pretty much does it for Eggman Nega for this first phase. So now we can take control of Supersonic again. So it looks like we're now on to, I want to say the halfway point of this battle right here. So either way though, and it's also worth noting for, I love the background music as been hearing in the background. Which, for what I can tell, I do recognize the song by the way, it was actually called What in Black. So I will say though, that musical track is so, so cool. Especially concerning for the fact I do know this music so much. And in fact, no matter what though, if you managed to able to get a game over, or specifically, if you managed to able to first time unlock uh, the extra mode for the sake of the forms of the actual gameplay menu, you may able to actually hear some small bits of the forms of Warped in Black. Uh, kind of portion of the song so now we can able to hear the song properly for reals in journey forms of the true final boss in the game So because of that though, yeah, that's as far as I can say about it So either way, and it's also worth noting for as well And that's what it appears to be about the fact that I was originally trying to able to try to see uh, The Godfield movie at some point, but not now anyway though Because I'll wait until when uh, either Mighty or Ray will both mention about the forms of that particular film for later well, not just by the forms of seeing a film for reals, but it's also with the forms of the review scores as well. So because of that though, and something tells me we're now on to the final stretch of the battle. So this means about the fact that I think this is going to be the second and the final time we can able to actually play as Burning Blaze right here. Because no matter what though, since we are still on normal mode, so this means about the fact that with each and every single phase, does have three hits, except for the fifth and the final phase of the fight. So because of that though, yeah, we'll talk more about that later. So either way though, and as we expected, it's gonna get a lot more difficult as far as this is concerned. Now you have to wait until that particular weak spot decides to be able to glow, until you're able to actually get a chance to attack him. But thankfully though, I found that Burning Blaze segment is actually way easier than he forms of how it does it for Supersonic in my eyes. So either way though, speaking of Supersonic though, here we go on to the fifth and the final phase of the fight. So this means that about the fact that I believe we have to hit Eggman for about uh, four times or something. Well, at least if I was assuming so anyway, because unlike in easy mode, I believe that if you set the actual boss fight on easy mode, that basically though, with four phases, you do able to actually hit uh, Eggman and Eggman Nega for about two hits, except on the fifth and final phase, because in the fifth and final phase on easy mode, there's only like uh, three hits, so unlike in normal mode, I'm pretty sure it's likely four hits, so it's gonna get a lot more uh, 
difficult to say the least. So either way though, that must have been short something, so... No, I believe somebody tells me if I do die at one point on this fight, then obviously though, the checkpoint thankfully is way more uh, generous, especially concerning for the fact that obviously though, you can able to continue where you left off, rather than just going back into square one, as far as for my uh, testing for the sake of time. So, either way though, yeah, this might take a bit while folks, especially concerning for the fact that I don't think it's possible for me to able to actually get myself my glorious S rank on this run, plus it's mainly because sometimes I won't met the right way with a supersonic portion of this fight, that it's actually way, way difficult to able to try and able to hit those projectiles back at Eggman in exactly where his glowing spot was. So, because of that though, I still found the uh, Burning Blaze segments is actually way easier. So, because of that though, although every once in a while though, it's about the fact that Eggman decides to able to shoot not only this very, very unpredictable uh, uh, wheel laser thing that is constantly shoots out, but it's also about the forms of this very simple uh, green blast projectile, which it was somewhat easy to try to deal with, but at the same time though, it's just about the fact that it's, you know, very, very tricky to able to try to get the aiming shots right. So because of that though, yeah, nothing else I can really say about it, I guess. So, although there's technically another thing I want to point things out as well, is that out of nowhere, is that what I found out is that the third entry in the series where it comes to the forms of the nun, I think it's what it says anyway, um, the actual word, uh, the third film in the series was actually gonna call it, uh, the nun, the last dance is might be considered as to be the final entry in terms of the forms of the v Man series as far as i'm aware well at least whatever i was thinking about it anyway so either way so there goes the third hit so i was expecting that the fourth is going to be the final hit for sure so because of that though but again sometimes it might take a bit while for the sake of the forms to try to able to aim at uh Eggman right here, but uh, luckily though, we were able to actually get ourselves a lot of extra lives in journey forms at the start of a fight. Plus, it's mainly because, you know, similar to the forms of how it does it in, uh, let's just say in Sonic Adventure 2, for instance, that uh, basically though, your lives will be carried over journey forms of any other story mode or something. So, unlike in Sonic 06, though, that you have to be able to grind as many of those extra lives as you could while the life's format has been reset. So, because of that, though, yeah, not a big fan of that. So there we go folks, that pretty much does it for the sake of Egg Salamander. So even then though, we can able to see that particular cinematic scene, where uh, basically both Supersonic and Burning Blaze will deliberately try to deal with this one final blow, joining forms of not only for Eggman, but also with Eggman Necker as well. So even then though, that seems really, really radical, whatever you think about it. So even then though, again, I will admit though, I apologize for my commentary, it's a little bit slightly iffy at this point, because still so after I finish up with the forms of this entire recording session, then I'm still basically excited to go back onto Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Switch Remake. So, anyway, let's deal with this final blow right at X Salamander Skadoosh! And something's worth noting for, I believe that uh, the yellow um, bit right there with the actual cockpit, I believe that's where Eggman is. And as far as I'm aware, for the blue cockpit was actually buddy forms of, I would say, Eggman Necker. But I will admit that right away, I really love the actual specific transition with the forms of each and every single faces of the fight. Because obviously, this is all like uh, dual screens and stuff like that. So yeah, I fully appreciate how this boss fight plays out. So, and there goes the worst rank I've ever gotten, which appears to be the C rank. So, oh well. Beggars can't be choosers, I guess. So, yeah, let's watch the ending to Sonic Rush. So, we can able to know about the fact that, well, everything else is over, right? For reals. So, because of that, though, it seems to be more specifically that uh, we can able to erase the space-time continuum. And not to mention, though, is about the fact that the theme song in the background was actually going to be called uh, Rising Me Up, which I will say... That music is also really, really cool and awesome at the same time. Although, sure enough, though, we've already heard some brief moments with it, not just by the forms of by the ending of Sonic's story, but also with Blaze's story as well, but it's just more specifically the prologue version of that specific song. So because of that, though, yeah, I always attempt to listen to that every single time whenever I manage to able to felt like 
Well, it's hard for me to say honestly, but either way though. And relatively speaking, that was about the fact that it looks like that Blaze might be able to actually go back to her, her own dimension. So no matter what though, that was before when Sonic 06 did somehow ruin the forms of Blaze's character development. Which, sure enough though, that will be, uh convoluted to say that? Well, mind you about the fact that we've already did done Sonic 06 just before we dive right into this game, so because of that though, strange transition indeed, but still, you can't really go wrong with it, I guess. And sure enough though, Sonic will see Blaze again, enjoying at some point in the future games. So, uh, yeah, it looks like that both Supersonic and Burning Blaze will go separated. So, no matter what, though, we can able to, you know, erase the space-time continuum. So, either way. There's also another thing I want to point out as well, that thanks to the forms of Tiana did somehow technically mention about this, is that basically, though, yes, indeed, the live-action version of Aladdin has recently became five years old. And while looking back on that film, though, I found it very lackluster in comparison compared to the forms of the superior 1992 film, animated film of Aladdin, just because of this particular richer colors, and you pretty much name the rest of it though. I'm sure enough that we'll let uh, Ray or Mighty will uh, mention about that if they're going back on to Super Mario Advance, and hopefully that uh, both Mighty and Ray are about to be both finishing up everything for the sake of the forms of Super Mario Advance before we move on to the next batch of Let's Plays, just before when, uh, well, more game announcements will about to be getting closer to its uh, existence. So, but I'm sure enough that was about the fact that June is going to be pretty exciting for the sake of the forms of not only game announcements, but also with certain, uh, well, let's just say upcoming DVD releases during that front or something. Well, then again, we'll have to wait and see what happens. So, either way, though. And, um, yeah, that's as far as I can talk about. It turns the forms off the extra zone to see how the fact that, I will say, though, that I still really love the music in the backgrounds, which, obviously, though, is... Seriously catchy though, especially concerning for a fact I will say that the soundtrack in Sonic Rush is easily the best aspect about the game for me, which that pretty much stuffed up as the forms of Sonic Rush to me is how fun this game looks, especially concerning for a fact that it's been almost like uh, 20 years old until specifically next year in 2025, alongside with the forms of Shadow the Hedgehog, where I basically thought it was about the fact that I will say that I had a lot of fun playing this game again, especially concerning for the fact I remember playing this game a lot uh, back in the old days, alongside with the forms of Mario Kart DS, Super Monkey Ball Touch and Roll, and even before new Super Mario Bros. on the DS, and even with uh, Super Mario 64 DS, etc, etc. So even then though, yeah, that's pretty much as far as I can say about the forms of Sonic Rush as a result for the Nintendo DS. So let's give my final thoughts of this game already, and that's what appears to be about the fact that I've already mentioned about this before, I love the soundtrack in this game. It is not only it's very catchy, but it's also very memorable as well. And not to mention though, it's about the fact that the graphics in this game holds up very, very well, especially concerning for the fact this is the first Sonic game to be released for the Nintendo DS after all. And no matter what though, in terms of gameplay, I found it very, very darn enjoyable. Even though there are some frustrating moments here and there, specifically with the second half of the game, where basically though, it's about the fact that it just no dives when it comes to likely bring ourselves a lot of puzzleless pairs you definitely need to avoid, especially concerning for the fact that with Altitude's limit is obviously going to be extremely tough as far as the level itself is concerned. And um, also, I really love the story, how that's been represented for, especially concerning for the fact I love the introduction to Blaze the Cat, which becomes a lot more relevant in the future Sonic games as far as this is concerned, despite the fact that in Sonic 06, though, did somehow retcon the forms of uh, Blaze's backstory, which obviously, though, that thankfully, though, Sonic 06 is non canon, so. That's thankfully be the case, so either way though, I'm sure you probably get the idea what I was going to be saying about this. So anyway, and it's also worth noting for is about the fact I feel like the controls in this game are really really dang good. And I will say, you will definitely guys should able to recommend getting this game. It's actually a lot cheaper to get these days now, especially concerning for the fact that I've honestly have no idea why does Sonic Rush never get re-released on the Nintendo Wii U Virtual Console re-release version, which that'll definitely give us a huge opportunity, so that way you can able to experience the game on the Virtual Console lineup, but unfortunately though, due to the Wii U's 
sales is actually gone really, really dang poor. So no matter what, though, I, I highly doubt about the fact that Sonic Rush is never going to bring up in journey forms within the Wii U Virtual Console lineup, especially concerning for the fact that, obviously, the Wii U eShop applications for both the Wii U and 3DS has already been dead by this point. So even then, though, you should probably be able to recommend getting this game physically wise so that way you can able to like assuming if you still guys you do have not only the regular nintendo ds it doesn't even matter if it's either the original ds model or ds lite dsi or even dsi xl and especially noticeable with the nintendo 3ds nintendo 3ds xl nintendo 2ds nintendo new nintendo 3ds new nintendo 3ds xl and finally new nintendo 2ds xl they should probably still able to actually uh, check out this game out it is seriously recommendable so because of that though despite its flaws but overall, I did have a really fun time playing this after all, especially that I finally get a chance to able to do this Let's Play for you guys out there. Which honestly, I felt super appreciated about that. So anyway, so this is me, Sonic the Hedgehog, for the likes of the Mexi Toys here. Up next, in terms of the forms of the Sonic retrospective of games, next up it will be a sequel to Sonic Rush called Sonic Rush Adventure. So I hope you guys may be looking forward to that, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!